Ladies and gentlemen, we continue the action with six rounds international super flyweight contest. Introducing to you, firstly, our visitor joining us in the red corner, wearing the blue trunks trimmed with white, weighing at eight stone, 10 pounds, 10 ounces, taking part in his 42nd professional contest from Nicaragua. Please welcome Johnson Tella. And ladies and gentlemen, here he is, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing the black trunks trimmed with gold, weighing at eight stone and five pounds with a perfect Undefeated record of 19 contests, 19 wins, 13 inside the scheduled distance. Ladies and gentlemen, the undefeated British and Commonwealth Super Flyweight Champion, the IBF and WBA Intercontinental Super Flyweight Champion, who, ladies and gentlemen, from Birmingham, England, it's time to meet the Beast Cow! Six rounds of boxing, time for the bell is Brian Heath. Our referee in charge is Mr. Kevin Parker. This is six three-minute rounds. You both know the rules. I expect a clean contest. Watch your heads. Remember to obey my commands at all times. Above all, protect yourselves at all times. Touch gloves. So all the Yafais were in the ring there at the start. Gamal Yafai, who's injured at the moment, of course. Galal as well, a GB boxer, competed in the recent Rio Olympics. Won a fight, then ran into the Cuban world champion, Ioannis Argalagos. Took him close, as he has done a couple of times now, but couldn't quite make it through that test. But this is the oldest of the three. This is the one of the three who is nearest to one of the biggest prizes of all. The plan was that he would be fighting for a world title tonight. The IBF title was the one they were looking at. But Joe Arroyo, the Puerto Rican, lost in the Philippines on September the 3rd which Yafai thought he might, so that went south, and they've had to make alternative arrangements. Yeah, really good pro Cal, you know, very decorated amateur, exceptional amateur, uh, from a very young age, World Cadet Championships, all the way through, Beijing Olympian, really looking to sink the body shots in already in this fight, and a big, big future ahead of Khaled Yafai. Well, Johnson Tellez was uh, very friendly at the start of the fight, whilst the introductions were being made, he was over in the Yafai corner, touching gloves and, and shaking hands really joining us on the commentary for this fight as well Dave Coldwell or not too disappointed Dave Coldwell as well after that last contest Paul Economides doing himself proud sometimes you still win when you lose it was one of those situations I think and your fight looks really sharp here Dave the fight is very sharp you can see him straight away he's already getting his power shots off you know um, you'd expect him to be in, in fine pedal against somebody like this but you know the thing is it could be almost be a little bit of a disappointment because we know what it was should have been fighting for tonight But he's got down to business and he's, he's using his jab, which is good. He's not going in there reckless and it's a good start And he's just not letting Tellez out at the moment Tellez was trying to escape to his left-hand side and Yafai just blocked him off immediately He's a big big Super flyweight. I've been speaking to a few of the lads who've been sparring him in the build-up to this fight and none of them really fancy him. Louis Norman was saying that he would fancy himself against anybody at Superfly except for him, and he had no problem saying it. Yeah, and I think that's the general consensus if you ask, asked all the people in Cal's weight in this country. He just looks so big and strong for the weight, and, you know, he's really banging these shots in here. Looks, look, you can hear the... We're sitting ringside, and I can hear the shots. I mean, you'd, you'd think it was a heavyweight that was in there by some yeah, of the, the sound that's coming off these punches. He's talented as well. The talent that goes with that power, you know, we're not talking about a kid that can just go in there and pop. You know, he can box, he can mix it up. And look at that left up. He's finally, you know, round one, and he's, he's probably landed about four or five good left ups already. There again. Left to the body, then looking for that uppercut. We've had quite a lot of Spanish base. Nicaraguans in the UK over the course of this weekend. You fire again just with the hook to the head and then looking for a kind of uppercut to the body almost. And he's had everything his own way in this opening round as we expected he would do. Tellez leaning forward. He's taken a fair few in this opening three minutes. Oh. And uh, we'll have to wait to see whether he can make it through the six. Deliberate use of the head there, it looks 
and the referee is going to give him a telling off. He apologises immediately, but uh, there could have been some damage done there, and that is the last possible thing that your fight needs in a fight like this. And here's that incident towards the end of the round. No, and that it. is not what he needs, is it? The no. only danger, really, with this fight, and I don't think I'm tempting fate here, the only danger is that he picks up some kind of injury. These are the, these are the things about fights like this, where, you know, the, the stay busy fights. You can you can pick up a cut from a head clash, you can break your hands, you can, you can get any sorts of injuries, and fighters are terrified about things on nights like this. Yeah, it's sometimes a bit of a catch-22 situation because you don't want to be out the ring too long, you want to get active, and you think it might help sharpen you up at the same time. You know, you're terrified of bruising a knuckle, damaging a hand, you know, getting caught. Yeah. You know, it's just, what do you do? It's, it's, sometimes it's a, you're damned if you do, you're damned if you don't. But Cal looking really sharp here so far. I think good advice from Max McCracken, just telling him to calm down a little bit, not trying to force the uh, stoppage, just get back behind the jab and just let, 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 let it flow because he's got every punch in the book, he's got all the skill and ability in the world, got the power to, so just let it flow. See, the thing, thing that I find, is, from my point of view as a trainer, is against somebody like this who you expected to win, you know, before before a big event, big fight, for a big opportunity, you kind of, there's no point in going out there and blasting mine around because you're not getting anything out of it. Sh you know, shake off a little bit of rust, just get the feel of being in a ring and a fight again. Just use it as an exercise like that. Sometimes that's probably easier if you're boxing out of town. When you're in your hometown, yeah. in front of your home crowd, you haven't boxed yeah. here for a while and you're all excited. You know, you get out, you might have you want to all, impress. all the best all the best plans in the world just go out the window, but uh, I think Cal has settled down here and he's uh, getting back behind the jab, so that's good to see. Well, he was happy to step in because he said it would have been very odd for there to be a Birmingham show and there not to be a Yafai on it. Of course, Gamal was supposed to be on it and he injured that ankle, so couldn't take part. Hopefully he'll be back before long. He's been up in Sheffield doing some sparring. Cal Yafai as well with the likes of Mo Ali. Jack Bateson, Sean McGoldrick, who's just turned pro, I think, and Kez Ashvak. A lot of fighters head up there to get some work in with the GB lads. Well, for, for Jamie McDonald's uh, previous fight, we went down to Max's gym and did a lot of sparring with Cal for that, and that was just absolutely world-class sparring, you know. Cal, you're fine, Jamie McDonald, it was, it was every spar, every round was just quality, pure quality. I think he's hurt to the body here, the back the way he pulled away there. He needs to lift that uppercut up right now and he's crouching over. Maybe touch him with a left hook downstairs, take a little step and then whip that uppercut up, give himself some leverage. And for the first time in a while there, Tellez managed to throw something back, managed to get that left hand away. He's trying to tuck up, as you say, just leaning over, but he's still finding that left around the back of the elbow there, yeah, fight. He is, but I think he needs to lift him up with the uppercut first, bring the gloves up, create the gap, and then switch the attack around the back of the elbow. Because the minute he's throwing the left hook to the body, he's throwing it well, he's getting good good power, good leverage behind it. But at the minute, Tevez is just blocking it with his elbow, so I think, you know, Cal needs to just touch him upstairs and then switch the body, back, switch the attack to the body. And, and maybe a little step to the side with that to give him that, that opening a little bit more. Johnson Tellez, he's getting some air in his lungs between rounds, and here's some, some work from your fight. Yeah, good straight one, two down the middle there. Was throwing some good left hooks to the body there. You could see he's getting it, but I just think he needs to lift him up with the right uppercut first, bring the gloves up, break the gap, then switch the attack downstairs. Well, into the third round. Saw some lethal body punching last night from Josh Taylor, winning the Commonwealth Super Lightweight title against Dave Ryan, another GB product who's turned over recently and won the title, a major title, very, very quickly. That's our Selby and Yafai has moved quick. Gamal Yafai is on the same kind of route. Maybe we'll see the third brother turn pro at some point. But these top amateurs now can move at a real pace. I think Kel's in... in Danger of perhaps getting a little bit frustrated if he doesn't get this guy out of here now. Uh, he maybe he could do with a, a few little feints and just to try and draw his lead or, or let him come out of his little shell so then he can pick a counter shot. But he, I, I, he definitely needs to start dropping some feints in. Yeah, and just get back behind the jab. Yeah. Like you say, you can't. The, tell us he's pretty tough, you know, and he, he knows how to tuck up. And Carl just doesn't want to try and blast him out of there because at the minute he's uh, he's putting a lot into these punches and Tellers is just taking them on the yeah. arms and gloves. So I think. That was Cal, a good shot. 
good body shot too, but I think he, he does want to just calm down here, get behind the jab. Like you say, give a few more feints and try and open up that uh, tight defence that Tellez is uh, using. Bit of swelling coming up on the right eye there of Tellez. He's taken plenty. And that right eye is just beginning to close, I think. The right uppercut got through there at short range from the FI. He's still the British champion, of course, and he's not going to vacate that title he'll keep it as long as he can he should have defended against Jamie Conlon that's what the board asked for but Conlon I'm told withdrew he's in action on November the 5th I think Jamie Conlon had that incredible fight with Anthony Nelson last year of course his brother Michael has turned over with top rank in the Lovely United shot. States good left hand there from your fight and some spite in these punches Good body shot there. Dug that in. I feel that one sitting here. His picking shot's really nice this round. He's tap, tap, then boom, isn't it? He's not looking for the big power shots right from the start. He's, he's working his way through it. Yeah, more composed. Good to see. But still, let's see a few more feints from him just to try and draw that uh, yeah. lead from Tellez. Maybe get a cleaner opening. Heading into the final 20 seconds or so. Good body shot. Around the down, Tellez goes, and that had been. Coming, Yafai had just tenderized him really. And a bit like you said, David, just stepped to the side there, created the angle, got the room, and then landed a lovely clean hook, and the fight's over. Great, really good performance from Carlo. Boy, looked really spiteful, looked powerful, looked strong. And then when he did settle down, he, he looked even better. He looked more composed yeah, and was getting his shots off better. Very impressive. You know, like we said, you know, he, he thought his way through the fight. He didn't just go in there blasting his way through it. He thought his way through it. When when he saw that things weren't working, he changed a little bit. Papa box really well. And yeah. just as that knockdown was scored, actually, I was just beginning to wonder myself whether he really needed any more of that, Johnson Tellers, and was beginning to have a think about what the corner might do at the end of that third round because it was one-way traffic he was taking a lot nothing was really coming back and I don't think there was too much point in uh, prolonging it and Yafai right on cue went and finished the job there are bigger things ahead for him we know there are and we'll be informed on those kept up to date up to speed before too long but here's the finish yeah it took a little step to the side created the angle and then just switched the attack Lovely little left hook, hook, hook to the body. It was a bit almost like a little Ricky Hatton move yeah. back in the day, you know, that little <laughs> side step to the side, get the, create the angle, and then bang, left hook, right into the floating rib yeah, area. Beautiful shot. Thinking. When you're in there in a firefight, you're thinking, you're thinking. Good performance. Well, it's a 20th professional win for your fight. It's not one that'll live particularly long in his memory. This was all about just getting back in that squared circle, shaking off maybe just a touch of rust, maybe just releasing a little bit of frustration because he's been in the gym for quite a long time, waiting to see exactly what was going to happen. Well, let's get the official confirmation of what we have just seen there from our MC John McDonald. Ladies and gentlemen, timekeeper Brian Heath has recorded a time of two minutes and 48 seconds of the third round on a count out, your winner and still undefeated from Birmingham, the Beast Cow. Well, Cal Yafai obviously widely expected to win that fight, not too much dangerous opposition, but how do you think he looked? Yeah, perfect performance, workmanlike performance, didn't take any chances, kept his hands nice and tight, picking the shots well, popping the little shots up the middle, switching to the body as well. For me, I thought it was a perfect performance, sets him up lovely for December 10. December 10, that's the rumour, isn't it? Is there a world title shot for you, Cal? You ask Edward, here he is, yeah. Let's, let's bring Eddie Hearn in, the promoter. Eddie, what is the news? Yeah, finally, all done. Carrier file challenge for the world title, December 10th, on the big anti Joshua card in Manchester. He'll take on Lewis Conception, looking to become the first world champion from Birmingham, and I believe he's going to go and do it. December 10, official world title shot for Carrier Fire. You had to win this evening, and you had to impress. No injuries, you've had problems with your hands before? Nah, they're fine, everything's fine. Um, it's, it's good for me to shake off some rust. But, you know, I've completed one whole round this year. Um, so it's good to get a few in there against a heavier opponent. You know, um, it took some stick, but um, you know, I always find a way. And 
I will find a way on December 10th. What about the end of that fight against Johnson Tellis? He was complaining about a low blow. No, I felt that right in the pit of the stomach. It felt like it hit him right on the belly button. Um, I'll have to watch it back again. But um, he, took, he took him pretty well, to be fair. Didn't expect him to take him that well, but it was good to get a few rounds in. Here we are. You can see the ending there, Cal. Yeah, yeah. That was a legitimate knockdown as far as you're concerned. As far as, I'm concerned, as far as I'm concerned, yeah. What about Luis Concepcion, the champion, WBA champion from Panama? I believe he's 31 years of age. He's got a good record. He's won on the road before in Tokyo. How highly do you rate him and what kind of a challenge is it for you? Yeah, I'll rate him. Um, you know, he's a, he's a big puncher. Two-time world champion, two-weight world champion. Um, so, obviously, he's, he's, he's got a recipe for a great fight. I'm a come-forward aggressive fighter, but um, I'm looking to show my skills. Um, he'll come forward, no doubt. But I think, um, I think he'll meet someone who can really punch at this weight. And I think I'll put him away at some stage through the fight. But I think I'll get re the real recognition I deserve once I do a good job on him. And then, you know, I'm world champion and people can't say nothing then. Eddie Cowell's 27 years of age, now unbeaten in 20 fights. It's time to let him off the leash, isn't it? Yeah, 100%. He's, he's been through all the guys. It was, it was so difficult finding him a match, just even for tonight. You're limited in the super flyweight division, but it is a, dim, a division where there are some big fights coming through. You know, Chocolito against Quadras was a great fight at super flyweight. He wants to get in that mix as well. Conception is a top fighter, just beat Kono in Japan. So he's, he's one of the top world champions. And, you know, we've had Cowell from his professional debut. It's been a great role. 20 and 0. Now it's time. It's time to find out if he's the real deal. We believe he is. I'll, I'll, te I'll, te I'll text him about that fight. As soon as, soon as Conception beat Kona, I'll text him. I says, can you get me...